looking at, at these circuits, we have a problem because our Ohm's law, as we know it already, Ohm's law, Watt's law, only deals with volts, amps, ohms, and power. Let's just call it watts for now, but we're gonna add a couple different types of power, different names of power in this class. But nowhere in here is Henry's. I don't have an equation to put in Henry's to figure out how much current these circuits will allow. So, we have this formula, and it's what we use to determine how much opposition an inductor will cause in a circuit. As the voltage pushes, what will that inductor push back? Remember at the beginning with inductors, when I run current, AC current, through a conductor, it has this magnetic field around it. And that magnetic field is constantly changing, expanding and contracting, positive, negative, constantly changing. And that constantly changing nature is what provides the opposition in an inductor. We refer to that as back voltage. So the applied voltage is this direction and it pushes a back voltage on it. And that is what provides the opposition to current flow. Without that back voltage, that CEMF, counter EMF, we'd have a short circuit. All the current would just flow. But that back voltage provides an opposition. And because it's the way the inductor reacts to the flow of AC current, we call it reactance. The letter X is for reactance. A little sub L identifies it as inductive reactance. Remember L for lens and L for inductance? Inductive reactance, key term. We're gonna find it's also measured in ohms because it's a kind of opposition. Resistors are in opposition and they're in ohms. They reduce current flow, okay? The higher the resistance, the less there. We'll find that the higher your inductive reactance, the less current flows. So let's take a look for a three Henry inductor. Two times pi times F, my frequency in Hertz, cycles per second. I chose 60. That's what most of our receptacles out of the wall use these uh, in, in the US. So we'll just go with 60 hertz times the inductance measured in Henry's, three. We'll do that math, pi being 3.14 or the pi button on your calculator. I'm gonna end up with 1131 and I call them ohms because they're a form of opposition. They are not resistance, they are reactants. Those terms will become increasingly more important. So our inductive reactants is 1,131 ohms per inductor. My XL, and that will be for all the inductors because they're all three Henry's a piece. They're all running at 60 Hertz. Now what we're gonna find out is this. I have a choice of calculating this inductive, rea uh, inductive reactance for each inductor and then totaling my ohms, or can I take my total inductance and use that number to get the same amount of ohms? Let's, let's try it and see. So my XL1 was that. My XL2 is also 1131. 1131. Now, how do you add ohms? You add ohms the same way you always added ohms. In a parallel circuit, you would use the uh, inverse-inverse operation 
or product sum if you just had two. And let's see what that becomes. My XL total Seventy-seven ohms, because in my parallel circuit, my total circuit opposition will be less than the smallest of the branch, and we'll find that that rule works out with ohms. So, as we've learned so far, inductors operate very much like resistors when we add them up. Same rules are parallel for the Henrys and the ohms. So we calculate that at 377. What would this formula have been if we did one Henry instead of three Henrys? Plug that in your calculator. 377 ohms. So it works. Let's consider now the series circuit. Again, that's times three, because there are three Henrys each, which we found out was 1131 ohms. So each of these is 1131 ohms. Now, when you have ohms in series, you add them up because as your current's going, it has opposition here, more opposition, more opposition. So I'm going to argue that my XLT is an addition of those things, 1131 plus 1131 plus 1131. Three, three, nine, three ohms. Before I write it up here, let's check that formula with nine Henrys. If we say there is nine Henrys of total inductance in the circuit, can I simply multiply by nine in this formula? And sure enough, punch that in your calculator. Three thousand three hundred ninety-three ohms. Now, why do I go through this process? Because you have a choice. Simplify your Henrys into the total circuit inductance and calculate reactance one time. Or calculate them individually and sum up the ohms using the proper parallel or series method. Your choice. Another thing I want to point out here, the way this formula is structured, if the frequency were to increase, that would mean that the, op the changing nature of the magnetic field would happen quicker. So that would be more change in there more reactants that would create a higher ohmic value. Or likewise, if we had more inductance, we would get a higher inductive reactance, which is true here. Three Henrys equals a little over a thousand. Nine Henrys, well over 3,000. So we want to see how our basic relationships work.